Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, you might be wondering, new settings, I am actually on holiday, but I had to give you guys a draw preview, of course, for the National Bank Open, the Rogers Cup. I'm really excited for this. It's going to be the ATP draw we're going to go through, draw preview and predictions, and then I'll be doing the WTA side after this as well. We're going to go through, as always, giving you guys my predictions round by round, giving you some brief explanations, analysis as well, and, of course, my picks for the first round and some tasty matchups, hopefully, uh, to see as well. Before we get into it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And if you're a podcast listener or watcher, remember to leave a rating or review. It really does help us out a great deal, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. Okay, Daniel Medvedev is the top seed here. That's a massive plus for the tournament. However, of course, some setbacks for the tournament with... Novak Djokovic not being able to play, he withdrew. The reason why he's withdrawn is because he's not being able to actually play in Canada with his current vaccination status. So disappointing from a tennis perspective, of course. Uh, but of course, it has been an ongoing saga since the Australian Open. For Rafael Nadal, he has withdrawn from, from injury. Well, well, with injury, sorry, even. That abdominal injury that caused him issues at Wimbledon when he had to withdraw against Taylor, well, after the Taylor Fritz win, uh, when he was about to play Kyrgios in the semi-finals, so he withdrew before that with that abdominal injury, and it was definitely affecting his serving in that Taylor Fritz match. He as well has withdrawn, and he was training fine. He said in the last four or five weeks uh, in a statement, and just said he started to serve for the last few days and felt a bit of discomfort. So himself and his doctor and medical team thought it best for him to not play. Understandable, and of course to round up and finish the big three Roger Federer uh, not expected to come back until the Labour Cup is uh, his expected return dates hopefully we see him there as well I've got tickets for that so I'm hoping he will play of course however there's still some fantastic players on show so we're going to go through it and I'm going to give you guys my prediction so let's get into it Daniel Medvedev has got a buy so of course he'll be making his way through Sebastian Baez, who you know has really shown his worth on the clay, on the hard courts, he's kind of yet to be proven, I would say. And Kyrgios has been in some fantastic form in Washington at the moment. Uh, he's playing some really good tennis, and I have a feeling he's going to get through this. As long as he stays fit, I don't see why he can't win uh, against Sebastian Baez, to be honest with you. Uh, he's a fantastic player uh, for the most part, is Nick Kyrgios sent. I think he's really come into his own since that Wimbledon final. And I think this year, generally, he's been really good. Uh, so I'm hoping that he can continue that form and show us what he's made of. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's playing a semi-final against Mikhail Eimer uh, tomorrow. So he will play the winner of Rublev Nishioka. So he's made the semi-finals at least in Washington. He'll be the favourite to make the final against Eimer. Uh, and then, of course, he plays Rublev. It might be a 50-50. But he's been playing really good tennis. So I'm going to go with Kyrgios. Shapovalov, Alex Dimonor. Alex Dimonor, of course, winning a, a tournament recently. Shapovalov has been in some very adverse form, to say the least. I'm actually going to go with Dimonor. I think he's going to be too consistent. I think Shapovalov, at the moment, just spraying the ball too much. And Dimonor has been really, really consistent, very solid. And I seem to have shored up some of his ground strokes and actually added a bit of pace and penetration to the court, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go Dimonor. Dimitrov Galano, who's a wild card from Canada. I'm going to go Dimitrov there. Schwartzman, Alejandro Davidic, Fakina. Both players, clay court specialists, really. I mean, both can also play on the hard courts and the grass, and they're still very proficient. But for me, I would imagine Schwartzman will be a bit too solid for Davidic, Fakina. But you never know. He, of course, upset her catch in the first round at Wimbledon. He's capable of beating anyone. He is. He's a very talented player. So that's definitely one of the picks of the first round. I would say Shapovalov de Manera is a fantastic one to watch as well. Uh, Goffan, Ramos, Vinolas. I'm going to go David Goffan as a wild card. I actually think he's had some good form this year. And Ramos, Vinolas is a clay court specialist. And for me, Goffan might have too big a game, actually. And it'll be a tough one. It'll be a close one. Vavrinka, Emil Rusevori. Now, this isn't the Stan Wawrinka that we've known a few years back, and I, I do keep on saying it, and it's the truth. Still a fantastic player in terms of the ability he has, but just not quite got the, I guess, fitness and stamina that he once did. And 
Therefore, for me, Rusevori will be too much. I think it's just going to be too fresh. Her catch has a bias, as rude. Uh, McDonald is playing Molkan. That's a fantastic first round. Alex Molkan, of course, being mentored by uh, Vida, who is Djokovic's ex head coach, and Mackenzie McDonald, a, uh, again, a very solid American player. But I'm going to go Molkan. Bublik, Brooksby, well, two pretty different players, you could say, because Bublik has a massive booming serve uh, and is a pretty blockbuster game that can make a lot of errors, but also make a lot of winners. Brooksby is almost the complete opposite. Doesn't have a big serve. Uh, he's very crafty with the serve, but it's not particularly big. And on top of that, he doesn't hit the biggest from the back of the court. He tries to induce errors from your opponent. So that will probably be a fantastic matchup. However, I think Brooksby is not a good star for Bublik. I think he's going to really frustrate Bublik and he's going to make a lot of errors, I think, the Kazakh player. But let's see. I could be wrong. Uh, definitely one to watch out for, by the way, because of the styles for sure. Uh, a qualified versus RBA, so we're not quite sure. Special exam, not sure what that means, but we'll go RBA. And Cam Nori versus Nakashima. <sighs> hmm. Cam Nori is going to be playing in the final of Los Cabos tomorrow against Medvedev. Uh, we actually have someone on the ground there, uh, Elias. So do check out our videos if you haven't done so already for uh, our preview for the final review of the semi-finals and of course a couple of shorts as well one actually of cam nori in the press conference after his win uh, so yeah definitely keep an eye out for that i'm going to go with cam nori though that's assuming he's not going to pull out because he could if he wins uh or even if he loses nakashima could beat nori given that he's played a whole week but i'm going to go with nori Ketmanovic, Avanazan Shop. I'm going to go Ketmanovic. I, I'm pretty pretty hard on him, to be fair. And Avanazan Shop is a fantastic player, though, as well. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go with Botic. Ketmanovic made the semis with Los Cabos this, this week. Avanazan Shop, I think, I, I think it's, it's time for him to start making some big moves again. And he's got a very solid game. Ketmanovic does as well. But I feel like Botic likes the hard courts. Uh, We'll see. Qualifier, qualifier. So we're not really sure who's going to go. So uh, nothing there at the moment. Felix has got to buy as a sinner. Holger Rune will be through as well. PR, this is the this is the pick for me. First round. PCB, so Pablo Carena Busta versus Matteo Berrettini. I'm going to go Berrettini. That's a fantastic matchup there. It really is. Uh, wow. Gail Monfils, Pedro Martinez. Good to see Monfils back in action. Uh, but I'm going to go in one feast. Maxim Cressy, Karatsev. I'm going to go Cressy to beat Karatsev. But of course, Karatsev a lot more comfortable on the hard court. So good to see. Sispat has a bite, as does Rublev. Let's go through Rublev, of course, in, making the semi finals of uh, Washington. So he makes the final there and then wins it. Yeah, this is a Masters 1000, so he will play. I doubt he'll pull out, but he could potentially get upset. Uh, but luckily for him, he's got a bye. Medvedev, Kyrgios, what a second round that could be. Uh, of course, we did have that in the US Open. We did, yeah, US Open last year, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't it? Or was it Australian Open this year? E either or. I've actually forgotten. But, yeah, I mean, <sighs> Kyrgios, I think, has definitely improved since then. Medvedev is still playing some fantastic tennis, though. Maybe as the favourite, I'm going to go for the upset and go for Kyrgios to win that. That is a fantastic match. We might have to cover that on the channel, I think. Uh, Dimina, Dimitrov. I'm going to go Dimina to, I think, at the moment, just form-wise, he's, he's looking good. I think Dimitrov, he, he can be a little bit hot and cold. Schwartzman, Goffan, a tough one. That's a pick -em. I'm going to go Schwartzman. Rusevori, her catch. I'm going to go her catch to start rekindling some of his form. Not an easy match, though, against Rusevori. Rude Molkan, I'm going to go Rude. Uh, he is more comfortable on the hard courts than the grass, that's for sure. And he should have a little bit too much in terms of quality. Brooksby, RBA. I'm going to go Brooksby. Cam Nori, Botic. Oh, it's tough, you know. It's very tough. I'm going to go Botic. Should I go Botic? Just depends on how Cam's feeling, really, after Los Cabos. But Mexico, Canada, not too far. I mean, how would he feel? 
It's a quick turnaround. Uh, I want to hear Cam Mori. Felix is going through Yannick as well. Holger Rune, Berrettini, that would be a great match. Berrettini, though, will have too much on the hard courts. I mean, Monfils Cressy, that could be very exciting. Monfils trying to pass Cressy at the net. Oh, mate, that's going to be incredible. What a match. I'm going to go Monfils to just Edgar. That could be, uh, that could definitely be a Cressy win, though. Kira Stimina, I mean, Kira should win the All Australian Affair if he gets through Medvedev, of course. Schwartzman had catch, had catch for me. Rude Brooksby going to go. Oh. Brooksby could cause the upset there. Going to go Casper Rude, though. Uh, Nori Felix. I'm going to go Felix then, given I think uh, it's going to be a, actually repeat, a replay of the Los Cabos semi final. Um, but I think Felix will get have the upper hand in this in this one. A little bit fresher. Uh, that's why as well. And I think he'll get his revenge at home. Cine Berrettini and all Italian affair. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go Cine. He's been great form. Great form on the clay and the grass. Um, but he's also a very good hardcore player. He's just in great form. So I'm going to go to him. And then Germont Fies. All right. And then I have Kyrgios Hakach. <sighs> hmm. Kyrgios and her catch. Kyrgios. Rude. Felix. Felix. Cinnamon Feast. Cinna. Cinna. Have I missed some picks? What's going on, eh? Oh, I have. Wow, sorry. On the first round. Went a bit uh, trigger happy. Sorry, Philip Kranovich, Dan Evans. Sorry, we're going to quickly reverse. Uh, Philip Kranovich, Dan Evans... This is the first round. Dan Evans for me. TFO, Bonzi, TFO, Murray, Fritz. Oh, that is the pick of the first rounds. I'm going to go Fritz. I think he's going to have too much for Murray. That's not a good first round pick. That's a terrible draw for Murray. Chilich, Korich, Chilich. Sarondolo, Hatchinov, Hatchinov. Popitzel, Paul. I'm going to go Tommy Paul. And then Alcaraz at the bottom there. That's better. That's looking better. Right. And then to finish off here, sits back as a bye. Rublev and Evans. I'm going to go Rublev. TFO Fritz. I'm actually going to go TFO, you know, to cause a bit of an upset there. Chilich Hatchinov. Oh, Hatchinov on the hard. Our crowd sweet Tommy Paul. So we've done all of these. Rublev, TFO. I'm going to go TFO to cause the upset. Hatchinov, our crowd is going to go our crowd. And then, so the one quarter final we were missing after. Doing Kiros Hakat, Rude, Felix, Cinnamon, Feast is TFO Alcaraz, is what I've gone for. I'm going to go Alcaraz to win that. And then semi finals, wow. I mean, that would be incredible if we get this. Kyrgios, Felix, and Cinna Alcaraz. And that's assuming that Medvedev doesn't make it here. Imagine if it's Medvedev, Felix, Cinna Alcaraz. I mean, that would be fantastic as well. Now, does Alcaraz get revenge over Cinna after losing to him twice this year? I'm going to go yes on the hard courts. Kyrgios, Felix. I'm going to go Felix to be too solid. I'm not sure, though. Kyrgios is so dangerous. Best of three as well. You're more so, I feel. And Felix, Carlos Alcaraz. I'm going to go Felix to win at home. It's a brave pick, I have to say, because I'm not quite sure how he's going to deal with the pressure. Let's quickly discuss actually from a tactical point in the semi-finals as well. So Kyrgios and Felix, I mean, both are massive servers. I would suggest that Felix is a better returner generally, um, but Kyrgios potentially has, well, he definitely has more variety. Volley's better and has probably a little bit better composure at times, especially on the backhand. Backhand to backhand rally should be able to win those. Forehand to forehand, though, Felix should have the upper hand. A server turn dynamics, you feel like Kyrgios is a better server though, generally, but that the portion or the percentage that he's better than Felix doesn't close the gap in returning ability for me. I think it maybe evens out if he's lucky. So really he needs to serve potentially better than par and then return better than par. And if he does, then he can win. But I feel like that's what he needs to do against Felix. That's if I'm talking about a Felix who's playing his best tennis. 
to be fair. And you then have to factor in that Felix is still very young. And not just that, but the way he plays and is quite aggressive, he can fluctuate in terms of his form. For Sinner and Alcaraz, I mean, Sinner, we've, we've seen a fantastic running forehand. His serve has been bulked up. Fantastic returner. Uh, great ability to get around the court. Uh, improving his volume as well. Backhand to backhand exchanges, he actually has the best of those exchanges against Alcaraz. Forehand to forehand, even he's having good success. Alcaraz, you know, very big forehand. Backhand generally against most players is very, very good. But against the guys with the elite backhands, he can struggle, like we saw against Sinner, like we saw against Sitspas, like we saw, um, well, not Sitspas, sorry, like we saw against Sinner, uh, Djokovic, uh, who else? Just one other player that I have forgotten who has an elite backhand, Zverev even, who's lost to your course this year as well, Massetti. So, yeah, that's obviously something to look out for. His serve, I think, I would say Sinner's serve has improved a lot more than Alcaraz, and that's the one area I think he just really needs to kind of just concentrate on big time. His return, I know he's actually in the top five, in terms of return ratings, in the top five returners on tour currently. I do feel, though, and I could I could be wrong, I haven't looked exactly into the stats, that his returning rating or ability has diminished in the last year or so. Um, and it's a very small sample size still, but I would say it needs to be improved. I think too many errors uh, have, have been filtering in recently in his game. So something for him to look at and understand his game better and also understand how he can stop those errors from flowing. So interesting to see um, how he gets on. But yeah, I've got him to, to, I guess, potentially cause an upset, I guess, really. And then Felix to beat Alcaraz in the final. I think Felix at home, crowd should be behind him. He serves big. Um, he should return okay against Carlos. Then it's a question of reading the drop shot and also making sure that he is trying to push Alcaraz back. I think he can hang with him in the forehand to forehand rallies. And then backhand to backhand, I think Alcaraz might have more success as, Al- as Felix's backhand is and as big, of course. So it's not an elite backhand. Uh, so Felix then needs to try and avoid getting kind of pushed and completely cramped in that backhand corner uh, and ex- potentially exposed on that side as well because I do think Alcaraz has got a more solid backhand generally. Uh, we might see a few backhand slices from Felix to try and mix up the pace uh, and I think it will be clever for him to come forward when he can as well. Alcaraz will most likely do the same. He's been trying to come forward more. You can see it in his game. Um, quite mature to be fair, beyond his years, Alcaraz at times, the way he tries to serve and volley. Serve volley on the second serve, I've seen it from him quite a few times, not a massive fan of that. Uh, maybe chuck that in as a surprise every now and then, but uh, he can do it on weird, weird, weird occasions on, uh, say, break point down, but needs to make sure he's holding his serve. He's been struggling to hold it, and a lot of that comes down to how many first serves he's making and also is he hitting his spots. So we'll see if he's able to do that. But for me, Felix had a spot server for sure as well. So I'm going to go Felix to win. Let me know your thoughts. Who do you predicting to win? And also, who are you most looking forward to seeing? What matches are you most look, looking forward to seeing? Let me know. Thank you very much. Stay safe and well. We'll see you on the next video. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe.